What if finding out your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease was as simple as taking a blood test? This development could mean that those who are identified as at risk could begin preventive treatment earlier. Today we found out more about this groundbreaking research from Dr. Nicholas Ashton, Senior Director of the Banner Research Biomaker Program. Doctor, welcome to Arizona Horizon. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. My first question is, what will this new blood test be able to reveal specifically about whether someone's at serious risk for developing Alzheimer's? How is this going to be different from what people are already seeing? Yeah, so um, the, the landscape of Alzheimer's disease has, has really changed in the last few years. So uh, being able to detect at the earliest stage if someone has Alzheimer's disease pathology in the brain has become extremely important because we have drugs that are starting to have meaningful effect on patients. Um, so we need to identify these individuals earlier. And really the techniques that we have are not very applicable to everyone. Only a small fraction of people can have a, a brain scan or a spinal tap. Um, so this blood test makes it available for everyone. It's, you know, a local clinic can, can take blood, of course. So this means it is very inclusive um, and everyone has the opportunity to uh, receive a, an accurate diagnosis and in the future, hopefully, the correct treatment. Well, that's, that's why this blood test is so exciting because the idea that it could just be a regular thing, either go to your local clinic or a local doctor, how long has this been in the works? Because we know that we're always waiting for that next sort of semi-silver bullet to occur. Has this been in the works for so many years to get to this point of where a blood test is effective? Exactly, yeah. So, I mean, I've been working on this for about 10 years or over 10 years now, and there's been colleagues before me uh, who've been working on it before, even before that. But I would say that these new generation of blood tests that we started to show real promise has developed in the last three to four years. So it's been a quite a rapid uh, advancement and it's a real testament to academic science has now produced something which is a clinically viable test. And that's, that's what is different now about this blood test because there has been a lot of excitement in the last five years. We've known that these blood tests were going to work. But the reason that this one is so exciting is now it is, is simply available for, for people to use. It's no longer a promise anymore. It's, it's here. And, um, and that's what's so exciting about it. And how many people were involved in the study that's being reported now? So there, there was around about 800 individuals that were tested. Uh, all these individuals received um, what we would call the gold standard diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. So they had a, um, a, a brain scan uh, and a blood test at the same time. Um, and simply we just wanted to see could the blood test perform just as good as the brain scan um, and 96 percent of the time it was it was accurate so really good concordance with what we uh, our gold standard and what was also very interesting about this study is that a lot of these individuals did not yet have symptoms um, but they had amyloid pathology or alzheimer's disease pathology developing in the brain and the blood test was still just as accurate even at that stage so although we don't recommend at the moment that people without symptoms should get a blood test, it should only be directed with people with mild symptoms because that's what our drugs are doing. It gives us real promise that if the intervention uh, is seen to be very, very effective very early in the stage, even before symptoms, that the blood test will play a crucial role in that, in that uh, kind of uh, clinical workflow. Well, that's an important question to ask, and maybe this is one of those sort of clinical questions, but um could you envision a time in the near future where if someone did want to get tested for this with a blood test as opposed to showing symptoms or having family history, they could just go ahead and have it done to get peace of mind to some extent? Yes, yeah, so I, I mean, there are some, you know, um, tests available that can do that. that they're not as accurate as, as these ones, so I, it's not something I would recommend. I would still recommend that this should be directed by a clinician because we have to remember that if you don't have symptoms and you have amyloid pathology in the brain, this is still a risk for Alzheimer's disease. It's not 100%. So we have to be a little bit more cautious here that, okay, this, this is a high risk that you are going to develop Alzheimer's disease, but it's not a definitive one um, when you don't have symptoms. So we have to be a little bit cautious there. But what we should say is that, you know, drug trials are happening right now, testing the same drugs, but in people without symptoms and seeing if the rates of dementia are, uh, are lower if people um, start these drugs earlier. So you can imagine this uh, scenario where a, a drug or a blood test like this is incorporated into a well health checkup at 60 years of age and uh, scenarios like that. You can definitely imagine that. But right now it's set very clearly by the guidelines that it's directed by a clinician. 
you must have objective or subjective symptoms and the blood test is then supportive of the diagnosis. So doctor, if the blood test indicates that someone is on the road to Alzheimer's or could be more susceptible to it, what sort of preventive options are there available right now? Are there things on the market that people could get, maybe not readily, but, but somewhat easily? Yeah, so um, easily or readily, it's, it's, that's a difficult question for me to answer for, from Europe because in the United States, you do have two approved drugs for Alzheimer's disease in the last few years, which clear amyloid from the brain. So that's, that's undisputed. Where, the, where it is slightly disputed is how much is the, is the patient benefit? And these drug trials have shown benefit, but maybe not quite as much as what we would like to see. But these drugs are available, and so we can act and we can start treating these individuals. So in the United States, you're in a very unique situation where it's not only symptomatic, but disease-modifying drugs can be administered to individuals that show mild symptoms. And in order to get those drugs, you have to prove that you have the pathology in the brain. And the blood test is going to be a key component of that. Very brief final answer on this one. What's next for you with this research? What are you going to be doing in Arizona? So yeah, in, in, in Arizona, we will come um, and uh, start a, uh, a, a large biomarker lab, which will do large scale blood testing. It will, it will provide this blood testing for the whole of Arizona and nationwide and for academic research and for, for pharmaceutical companies. So it's, it's going to be a large resource of high quality blood tests. Um, but my personal research where the lab will look at is different types of dementia now. So Alzheimer's disease is uh, only 60% of dementia cases. There are 40% of other dementias out there where we have absolutely no tests for. So we, we are still diagnosing them based on clinical symptoms. And this is fundamental that we have tests for them so drug development can uh, occur. So I'm talking like dementia of Lewy bodies or vascular dementia, frontal temporal dementia, which are, of course frontal temporal dementia is, is very uh, front in the news right now with, with um, mm -hmm with Bruce Willis. So these are all types of dementia um, that have absolutely no tests and that will be the focus of our research at the Banner. Okay. Well, Dr. Ashton, we wish you the best of luck, obviously, and thanks very much for your time today.